Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Cheryl Lentz, and today I have the honor of telling you about a story I'd like to call Fail Faster, Succeed Sooner. Many of us have a hard time talking about the F word, and no, I don't mean the one that you're thinking about. This F word I'm talking about is the idea of failure. Failure is often something that just takes us out of the game. It's emotionally grueling, it's emotionally devastating, it paralyzes us, and there's a judgment to it. My goal is to be able to help teach you about how to process failure. It's not the enemy, but many of us think that failure is not an option. And that's what I grew up with. And the idea is once it took me to get through my doctorate program later in life, I realized failure is the only option. Failure is only the power that we give it. And unfortunately, we've learned failure over the years, and I'm here to try and dispel some of these myths to be able to help you process failure more effectively and to make it your friend and make it fun. So I'm going to take you back in time just a little bit. Are you willing? Trust me. I have been a college professor for over 20 years, and I see failure around me all the time. So my goal is to help students process failure and to help my authors process failure because I'm a published author more than 40 times. And I work with authors to be able to help them understand the gift, yes, I said gift, that failure can offer. So let's get started. How many of you have children? Okay. How many of you have young children? What I'm looking for is the toddler, the right before they're getting to walk kind of stage. So here's what I want to offer you. Let's look at how the young child decides to understand the idea of learning. The idea of learning in this case is they want to learn to walk. They see enough of adults that are walking around them and so they're going to have the ability to, I want this, but there's a motivation. Typically there's something at the end of that. Walking is a means to an end, not the end. They want the cookie. They want mommy. They want to get from where they are to where they're going faster and walking is the only way to do it. We don't come out of the womb looking at this. We have to learn it. And let me give you something very important. Anything's easy once you know how. The question is learning, and that's where the F word comes in, the failure that we just don't like. And so I want to offer the ability to look at how toddlers process failure, because I wish we could stay in that state, because the toddler doesn't know that there's anything wrong with what they're doing. They're just finding one way, how does it work? So what does a toddler do, right? They get up, sometimes they fall down, sometimes they topple over, and then they giggle. And I think this is the most amazing thing. Couldn't we just laugh our way to success? Couldn't we just laugh our th way through the hard times? But it's hysterical. As long as a parent doesn't really get too involved and the child doesn't get hurt, they're just going to kind of brush it off and get up and do it again. And then they giggle and they get down. Right? Get up, get down, fall down, get up until they master it. But the problem is, is however long it takes them, whether 10 times or 20, they don't stop. Failure is only permanent if we let it stop us. And a toddler understands the idea of success is walking and they want that cookie and they want to see mommy and they want to see whomever's around us. They want to achieve that end. Walking is an end and in order for them to master it or at least become competent at it, they need to practice. And so they get up, they fall down, they go boom, right? So they get up, they giggle, they do it again and again and again and again and again, however long it takes in order for them to achieve mastery. But they don't think it's any big deal whether it takes them one time or 10 times or a thousand times. For whatever reason in life, we learn that it is a big deal. And that it's tough for us to continue to get up and fall down and get up. And sometimes we just don't get up anymore. And that's where the stigma of failure comes from. So let's go back to that two-year-old and realize how can we make failure just fail faster, get it out of our system and be done with it. And I used to teach this to my employees all the time. I used to scare the heck out of my bosses all the time. It's like, you want to teach us how to fail? It's like, yes. And here's why. Oftentimes we see failures at F word that takes us out of the game. And I'm going to share a quick story with you that I was one of those annoying people in high school. Up until that point in high school, I had received a complete A's. Salutatory, and I got one B in, in physical education when I was in junior high, but everything else was A's until, you knew that was coming, right? That I uh, entered Calculus BC, that was the advanced calculus class in high school. Things were going okay until about spring semester, and then I hit a wall. And I just couldn't do it. And up to that point, there was never anything I couldn't do. I got a tutor. I got help. I was able to master it eventually. This time, I struggled. And I struggled a lot. And I remember getting my first C. And then I remember getting my first F. And here was the challenge that my parents tried to help me process failure. 
but I didn't go far enough because up until that point in time, I never get paid for my A's. I get straight A's all the time. It was never expected. It never made the refrigerator. It never made any big to do. It was just, that's just what I did. And I've been doing that ever since I was in kindergarten. And so the challenge became is that F was what went on the refrigerator. And imagine the mockery and the devastation of every morning seeing that that F was there. Now, the way my parents wanted to attempt is to realize and make the idea that failure is just part of life. And for someone who had never earned a C, let alone an F, it was devastating. But they didn't help me process it as to why it was devastating. It just wasn't. It ate at me and I got ulcers when I was in high school. And it was just, it was a traumatic time for me because I didn't know what to do with it. So I want this seminar to help you understand what failure is. Failure is nothing more than continuing to try and to get up one more time than you fall down. That's it. And I know for those of us that F word comes out and we're like, oh my gosh, we're done. But imagine if some of our great thinkers in history would have done that. Do we know the story behind Edison, the guy with the light bulb, right? We wouldn't be here without the light bulb. He had failure 997 times. How many of us would have given up at 4, 12, 362, 452, whatever that would have been, that we would have given up because we didn't understand failure. We would have taken it personally if there's something wrong with us. And here's the secret. I have to help you separate you, the person, lovely, fabulous, dynamic, absolutely amazing. But from the skill you're trying to learn, maybe not so much. Some of my students, the writing, not so much. Maybe you're driving, not so much. Maybe you're whatever skill that you're trying to master, you have to go back to being a two-year-old. You didn't come out of the womb learning it. Some people are better, some people are quicker, but we all don't come doing things the right way the first time, usually ever. The question is, how can we get better at looking at what Edison did? I would like to think that if I went to have lunch with Edison, that he would think failure was just no big deal, just part of success. And he was like, yep, 121, that didn't work. Fall down, giggle, get back up, try it again tomorrow. 772. Yep. Nope. That didn't work. And think about the idea is failure isn't bad if we know what it means. I'm one of the strange people you're going to meet during my dissertation. I'm an academic speak. All I did was le learn something called uh, proving a null hypothesis. And that just means, you know what? I found nothing. Zero. Zip. Not on a big goose egg. And I thought I failed permanently. That somehow they could kick me out of the program and take away my birthday. The question is, my doctoral mentor was the one that really helped me process failure because he's like, Cheryl, you know, I swear he was patting me on my head like a young chill. Have I taught you nothing? All you did is find out one way that didn't work. It's still valuable. See, we always think we have to prove a positive. The fact is I proved a negative. So that means well, that didn't work. Rinse, repeat, and do it again. I guarantee you I was the first one to graduate. I didn't have a lot to say. When you find nothing, not as a big goose egg, it was a very quick chapter five write-up. But that's my whole point, is learning how to process failure. I thought it was going to take me out of the game like it did in high school. I mean, it just ate at me. And the fact that there was nothing ever I could, couldn't do up until that point. Had my parents, perhaps, and others around me helped me process that failure the way I learned to do in my 40s, then maybe things might not have been as devastating when things didn't work out the way I had hoped. So when you go into, that's my process here for you today, is to look at the gift that failure is giving you. Failure is just telling you one way that isn't going to work, but the easy way is the word called yet. I haven't succeeded yet, but I went through life pretty much until my doctorate to my late 30s thinking that failure was not an option. And now I've since proved the fact that failure is the only option. If you want to succeed, you got to find out what doesn't work. And so my point is here is get it out of your system quick. Fail faster, succeed sooner. Know what doesn't work so that the next time you know exactly what it is because anything's easy once you know how. Just like that toddler. Once you learn to walk, you don't really have to learn to walk again unless you have a new, you know, an accident or something devastating. You've got the basics. So don't let it take you out of the game. Failure is a four-letter word only if we let it to be failure. And it's only a failure if we can learn how to process it. So if I can help you separate you, the person, from you, the skill you're trying to master, you might have an easier time that failure is just another word in the dictionary. And no, the F didn't stand for fantastic, but it helps me understand that you have to learn where your skills lie. Some of us will be really good at other things. Some people will only be adequately good at sometimes. 
But the idea is learning takes time and learning should be a game, should be that two-year-old toddler getting up and giggling and making sure the fact that we understand that failure is a gift. It just tells us one way it doesn't work so we don't have to go down that path again. We know it doesn't work, we're safe. Let's find something else. Let's find a new way that doesn't work. 997 times. Can you imagine? I don't know if I would have been able to succeed that often that early in the game back in the day. If I would have been on 781, if I would have even made it to 100, unless you reframe the problem, reframe the idea of failure, and look at yourself as an opportunity and a work in motion, work in progress, right? So I want you to look at yourself the next time that something doesn't work. Giggle. Laugh it off. Look at the idea, yep, it didn't work, moving on, moving next, and to keep going. Because the people who succeed in this world aren't always the smarter folks. They're not always the brightest. They're the ones who understand failure. They understand that to succeed, you have to be able to willing to go around that mulberry bush maybe one more time, maybe many times, maybe lots of times. I know many business owners who will go through a lot of trials and errors before they find that one quintessential formula that works, which is what's the point? Anything's easy once you know how. So let's get that failure out of your system. Let's find all the ways that don't work. Let's fail faster and let's succeed sooner. A lot less stress, a lot less drama, and a lot more peace and understanding. And failure is only what we live it to be. And if you can make failure your friend, and you'll be able to understand that failure is nothing more than a tool on your way to success. So what I'm going to do today is wish you failure so that you can understand how to process it and to be able to move forward so you can succeed sooner and have all the accolades you want. Just remember that two-year-old, this little child in all of us. So my name is Dr. Cheryl Lentz. I would love to be able to talk with you after the um, seminar over over today and to learn about your ideas of failure. So we'll stop here and I will take any questions that you might have.